called to order. And Madam Clerk, can you please call the roll? Alderman Davis, Alderman Moore, Alderman Vaccaro. Present. Alderman Howard. Present. Alderman Murphy. Here. Alderman Boyd, Alderman Boyd. Alderman Muhammad. Present. Chairman Williamson. Here. Alderman Davis. I'm in Moore, I'm in Boyd, five present, you have a quorum. All right, we have quite a, quite a few uh, different departments on the agenda on the docket today. But first of all, we'll be taking uh, the budget director, uh, Mr. Paul Payne, and he can come up and have a seat and get through the budget. And good morning, Mr. Director. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Be plenty to go around for those who are not here as well. Anybody else believe more? Starting on the presentation, the fact that it's circulated on page two uh, highlights the overall budget proposal for FY19. The total uh, proposed budget for FY2019 is $1,111.6 million. That's an increase of 5% over the previous fiscal year. And if you look at the chart below that, you'll see the components of the various special, the fund, general and special funds. General fund at $516.6 million is an increase of 0.7%, so uh, just under 1% growth there. Most of the activity you're going to see in this proposed budget is in the special revenue category. It's $172.8 million. That's a 25% increase. Of course, that reflects the first full year of the economic development sales tax, which went into the last, this, this current fiscal year's, uh, uh, went into effect this current fiscal year, but it'll be the first full year uh, next year, as well as the first, uh, which is a full year of Prop P uh, receipts, which are budgeted, and I'll discuss in detail later in the presentation. And then also the use tax increases uh, related to that. Uh, in the grant fund category, 61.5 million, that's a 13.5% increase. Uh, I think you see some increases in police departments on grants, 2.1 million, and then slight $5.6 million. The debt service fund, that's $5.9 million. That's a 0.4% increase. Debt service fund is the fund we use to pay off our general obligation fund debt. So that's a, it's a small amount, but it, but it is uh, appropriated each year. Capital improvement funds, $37.5 million. That's a decrease of $5.9 million. But I should point out that the decrease is mostly because our, our debt service, particularly on the Justice Center, went down this year. What you will see, uh, and I'm sure you're welcome in, in the, the capital fund, is there are full allocations for both the ward accounts and capital uh, and rec recreation capital accounts. Enterprise funds at 232.6 million is a 2.7 percent increase. The Water Vision has some uh, projects in, in it within its operating budget, and so it's seen an increase of 4.6 million, and the airport's up 1.6 million dollars. Internal service funds at 84.7 million is a 4.6 percent increase. The internal service funds are is a fund used to for uh, departments which charge among e each other. Uh, and basically, the biggest fund of that is the employee benefits fund. We pay health insurance to that fund, and it pays the in providers. And you see the general fund budget, 46 percent of the total, just under half of the overall budget. On page three, it, this is sort of a uh, snapshot of how we're doing. Uh, how the, some of our major revenue sources are doing this fiscal year. Earnings tax revenues growth has been lagging through the third quarter. Uh, the payroll tax was flat. Sales taxes recovered after a slow start, uh, but we still have somewhat trailing estimates this fiscal year. Uh, if you if recall, uh, through our mid-year, we were trailing about $5 million in revenue, a little over $5 million in revenue. Plus, we had some expenditures with overtime, police, and fire. Uh, that we needed to accommodate. So 
In addition to this budget, I do anticipate that we're going to need a supplemental appropriation this fiscal year in order to make sure we end, end the year uh, balanced. If you look at the earnings tax, it was up 1.6% year to date. The individual portion was up 2.2%, but corporate receipts were down 3.2%. Um, and its long-term growth uh, ranges from 2.6% or so. Uh, a little, little higher in the three-year term, but if, as you go out longer term, 10 years, about 2.3%. Payroll tax has been uh, flat this year. It's up 0.4%, which uh, you can see from uh, the graphic explanation there. It's, it's down 1.9% in the third quarter uh, and 7.77% 7 .7, 7 .7 in the second quarter after, fall, after a big increase in the first. Typically, it, the payroll tax would grow in the 2.1% range on the five-year growth uh, rate. Sales tax, uh, similarly, is, was down, uh, was up 3.4% in, in the third quarter and is up 2.3% for the year. Its long-term growth rate, however, is typically less than 1% a year. Yes, that, in the use tax. That's coming up now? That is coming in, yes. Okay. I'll, and I'll discuss some of the special re fund revenues a little later. Now, on, on slide four, what you'll see is the mid-year, is the, uh, the budget gap that we were addressing to make sure that this budget was balanced. Uh, if you recall, in the mid-year review, uh, it estimated a gap of about $14 million. We did get a little good news in that the pension cost went down a little bit. So that by the end of the third quarter, and with a revenue update, we ended up with about a ten and a half million dollar gap, and this is sort of an identification of where those where those numbers uh, fall. If you can look at the beginning base revenue of five hundred ten point four million, which was this year's estimate, adjusting that for about five and a half million dollars less uh, with uh, revised estimates, we did we did increase the refuse fees. That's three point six million, and then we also have some underlying growth of about one point six million. 1.6 percent, and that's $8 million. So that gives you $516.6 .6 million for the budget. So you take the budget, and five and ten, this year's budget, 510.4, and what are the increases and decreases? So you can see uh, police civilian pay increases over time. Health insurance is about 5.7. Police pension went down about 700,000. Uh, we do have a, a safer grant at the fire department that's expiring, which means we have to assume some, uh, some of the about 20 firefighters that'll be expiring in October, so we have to pick that up on the general fund side. Fire pension costs actually went down, and I'll talk a little bit about uh, the pension uh, issues later in the, in the presentation as well. Uh, Non-uniform pay increases of about three, and health insurance increases of about 3.4. Now, as I mentioned, the Justice Center lease debt is down. That's going to be paid off in the next couple of years, so we're seeing that one decline before it goes away. $5.7 million. But we do have the first year uh, payment on the Scott Trade Center deal, which was $1.5 million. And then we also have an increase in the Carnahan Courthouse debt, which was refinanced, and we took that savings over the last two years. So now it's back up to where it was before. And then also we have to have a first year cost of estimated cost of the state audit, uh, about $600,000. The, the, the estimated range is somewhere between 1.3 to 1.8 or something like that. And, and when we did this the la about 10 years ago, we ended up paying about half a million in the first year, and then the next year was another half million or so. And then some part of that's going to be enterprise funds, but uh, it, it's estimated that we have an estimate of about 600000 in this year's budget. Workers, un workers unemployment comp, that's a little bit higher, about $600,000. Personnel, they had a requested increase for fire and police testing of 600000 Another increase we've seen are the cost of judgments, uh, particularly police judgments, which have been going up in the last few years. Many of them pre-local control, which uh, the, the, uh, the city is on the, on the hook for in, in terms of with the state uh, in, in paying off. Forestry weed cutting was an uh, initiative that we approved this year. Uh, it's about a $100,000 increase, in which we use contractually to address that issue. Board of Elections is going to have four scheduled elections this coming up year, so that's a countercyclical thing. It's, uh, every other year you have an election year, and that increases their cost by about $1.1 million. The Refuse Division, obviously we increased the fee, so you, we also increased some, uh, some of the collection efforts, as well as uh, of the $3.6 million, uh, we increased the fee. That was about half of that went into ref purchasing new refuse trucks, and then enforcement cameras, and the trash task force, and so 
Equipment services, up a half a million is rising fuel and repair costs. And then, um, on a, as a new uh, proposal in this fiscal year, also uh, a fund balance contribution of 1.5 percent of pay. And, and this is something that's going to be very important uh, in, in terms of uh, where we are and, and how we uh, address some of the concerns expressed by rating agencies and establishing a mechanism every year to set aside monies for when the next recession ultimately comes. And that's a $3.4 million in this proposal. Paul, we're going to add that to the reserve fund? Yeah, if you look uh, at... No, we want him to get through his presentation. Then we're going to be questioning. Okay, so let him go ahead and spill through. Okay, thank you. Okay. So, um, of the $10.5 million gap there, uh, about the next slide just illustrates that about $5.4 million of that is reductions, and then about $5.1 million of that is from special revenue fund appropriations. Uh, increases in the use tax, gaming fund increases, things like that which are helping offset some of the, the gap on the general fund side. On page six uh, are some of the highlights by departments. General government and finance uh, down about $900,000. Personnel, one position. Mayor's office was down three positions. While we included uh, hiring uh, tests for the departments of, uh, for police and fire, we did not include the promotional testing. So that, that's, that was not added. Uh, on parks and recreation and forestry, they did have some attrition salary savings, though no cuts there, about 300000 Judicial offices, uh, circuit courts were down two positions. The circuit attorney, no change in number of positions, although they had some salary savings. The sheriff was down five positions, and that was recommended by the courts. And city courts is down about three. County offices, uh, medical exam medical examiners up 50. Recorder has cut one position to offset other increases. Streets, not really much there, uh, other, other than the refuse increases I talked about earlier. Uh, they do, they are still pursuing that LED uh, uh, conversion of street lighting, which is offset by the utility savings. Public safety is where some of the bigger changes were. Uh, the building division is down three positions, and they've got some miscellaneous reductions. And then obviously the, uh, the neighborhood stabilization reorganization proposal, that's about an $800,000 hit, cut of 12, uh, I call them NSO positions, and one supervisor. That's what's, that had been highlighted in the presentation to ENA and is what where everyone's trying to uh, come to some resolution for. Uh, and then corrections <coughs> has been uh, experiencing a lower census. And they have a, uh, so there are some reductions in their contractual services, but we also had to budget for the temporary air conditioning units that we will again have this summer. Hopefully, with the bond issue proposal we have in August, we'll be able to get some permanent solution for that facility, so uh, uh, we won't have to do that in future fiscal years. Police department, we had about $2.4 million uh, reduction, mostly through attrition and salary savings. This does re offsetting some of their increases in overtime and such. And we have a reduction in two vacant marshal positions. And facilities management's down one position. So there's your $5.4 million in reductions in an overview uh, for the departments. On slide eight, you'll see a, a summary of the, of the general fund revenue outlook. Uh, the earnings tax, $179.1 million. Uh, estimating that 2.7 percent growth. Again, that's that's more in line with the five-year growth uh, growth uh, trend uh, for that tax. Property taxes, which are actually one area which is outperforming this year, it's estimated at 62.3 million dollars. It's a 1.5 percent growth, which is again in its uh, within the, the range of its growth trend over the last three to five years. Sales tax receipts at 53.9 million uh, and 1% growth. Uh, it's assumed again closer to the longer term growth rates. Payroll tax at 39 million, 2% uh, growth again back to its longer term trend. Um, the decrease you see in the franchise utility taxes is 51.4 million or a negative 3.6%. That's because in the current fiscal year, we received a settlement payment from Ammer and UE, and that was a little over $2 million. So that was a one-time hit uh, or one-time benefit in the current fiscal year that would not repeat itself next year. Otherwise, it would be flat. So that's, uh, that's what's going on in that category. Intergovernmental fund revenues, uh, $27.4 million. That's an 8.1% increase. This category includes things like 
prisoner reimbursements from the state, as well as payments for EMS, Medicaid, and Medicare uh, reimburse, uh, reimbursements for services. One thing about the prisoner reimbursements, the state was slow this year in getting us some uh, uh, in, in payments. So uh, I do expect to see a, an increase next year, not because of, of the uh, uh, an increase uh, in overall payments, but just the timing is such that we will probably receive some payments that were due this year in, in, that will be recorded in the fi next fiscal year. Licenses, uh, pretty much flat, 14.1 million, 1.1 percent increase. Uh, departmental fees and fines, uh, uh, 56.5 million, that's a 2.5 percent increase. It also incorporates, the, again, the first full year of refuse. Remember, refuse was sort of a mid-year increase, and so now uh, uh, we will receive that in, in, in a full year. And 32.9 uh, percent in the other categories. You will see, as you look at the chart below, earnings tax represents 35 percent of our general fund revenue. On the general fund, uh, next page, general fund expenditure outlook. Uh, again, I won't go into this too much detail as I already uh, went over it a little bit. You can see general, the big increase in general government, 26.4, uh, 9.2 percent increase. That reflects the $2 million you'll see in the city councilor's office over and above what we budgeted this year for, uh, for police judgments. Uh, a decline in non-departmental of 6.5 percent. That's mostly because of the Justice Center debt going down. Scott Trade going up, the audit costs also be included, uh, and the Carnahan debt also uh, increasing. Uh, judicial offices down 0.6. The big, in uh, that's not much of a change. The big increase in the county offices, you can see at 15.6 percent, that's the election board uh, because of the, the scheduled elections I mentioned earlier. And in streets, the 7.6 percent increase again is for the full year of uh, those refuse initiatives funded by the increase in the refuse fee. And if you look at the chart below, public safety represents 56% of the general fund budget. Now, starting on page 10 is a discussion of some of the special fund revenues. Uh, under, in, on the, under the local use tax, uh, it was up 23% year to date, which includes the economic development sales tax bump that we got because of that tax, as well as the online sales. Uh, Alderman Vicarra, you mentioned earlier. Uh, it's tracking at $32.9 million, which is overestimate the current fiscal year, and we've got an F FY19 estimate of $33.7 million. And you can see uh, what the allocations are there. Affordable housing uh, is receiving its full allocation of $5 million plus an additional $500,000, and it also has some also has some funds that were freed up from an earlier appropriation, which is which it's also appropriate. So its total budget is $5.8 million in FY19. Healthcare trust fund is also fully allocated to $5 million, and the building demolition fund will also receive $3 million uh, in the full allocation. That's $2 million over the original FY18 budget. The excess use tax, which funds a variety of, uh, of uses uh, for both neighborhood stabilization, public safety, and health, uh, funds the refuse division, housing conservation, police, which is a 9.9 you know, .9 million or a $2.2 .2 million increase, health division, $7.2 million and human services uh, about $400,000. So that's $20.5 million. So there's the budget of $34.3 million total for local use tax. The Economic Development Sales Tax Fund, uh, this will be, the, as I mentioned earlier, this will be the first full year of that tax. And by ordinance, it's allocated, uh, according to the chart you see there, transit is 60%, which would be about $12.36 million. And then each of those four categories Categories below it receive about 10% uh, of the total. Now, of, in the current fiscal year, the only amount that has been actually spent has been is the city infrastructure piece, 10%, which actually is appropriated to the capital fund. And again, next year will be appropriated to the capital fund. So it's possible that we will need to reappropriate this year's monies again for an FY next uh, FY19. The uh, lead and building demo funds, the 60% of certificate inspection funds remained in the general fund. Uh, the lead fund balance is currently estimated to be about $3.2 million. Building demo and board up fund uh, is to receive $500,000 from the use tax demo fund to reduce that deficit in that fund, which has a negative balance uh, estimated at $1.1 million. Gaming is actually up this year. It's up 13.8% uh, through the FY18 third quarter, that should say 18. Uh, reversing decline in uh, trend over recent years. So that's actually a positive development we've had in that source of revenues. Uh, 
FY19 budget of 7.4 million is up 1.1 million for capital and police budgets. The next page on slide, slide 11 is a highlight of the allocation for the half cent sales tax uh, and use tax known as Prop P. Sales tax revenues estimated at 19.5 million. The use tax estimate related to that is 3.9 million for a 23.4 million dollar estimate. And of course, per the ordinance, 66% uh, of that was allocated towards police, which should be sufficient for a $6,000 pay increase plus benefits and pension. That's $12.8 million. Fire department similarly gets a $6,000 funds for a $6,000 pay increase plus benefits and pension of about $5.5 million. And the circuit attorney, uh, at least on the sales tax portion, gets 6% for both staff and raises of about $1.2. Million. And, and on the use tax side, uh, the 3.9 million, uh, there was an allocation of 25% for after school and summer jobs at 20, uh, and this has been allocated to the Department of Public Safety for youth jobs in Department 610 of about 275,000, and for the police cadet program in Department 650 for about $700,000. The circuit attorney also gets another uh, another piece of this. Uh, uh, program of 7.7 percent for staff and raises. So the circuit attorney's allocation from Prop P total is about one and a half million dollars. And recreation programs get 25 percent of the use tax piece. That's and that has been budgeted uh, for the Department of uh, Parks, Recreation, and Forestry. Recreation division is, as you'll see, an addition of 11 positions in that in that fund. And then Department 210 has contractual programs. By the way, this is fund 1125 when you're looking in your budget, uh, so let's label this. <coughs> Building demolition uh, received 17.3% of this uh, total, which is $675,000 in FY19. And then Social Works Mental Health also gets 25% for the ordinance, and that's you can see that in Department of, uh, of Human Services 800 with Human Services and two positions in contractual services. It also includes funds for the public administrator, 70000 as well as the community mediation community mediation program of two hundred thousand dollars. On slide twelve, uh, proposed capital fund budget, as I mentioned, was thirty seven point five million dollars. That's a decrease of two point three million from the previous fiscal year. It's mostly lower due to the fact that we've got some debt service that is falling off, particularly the justice center. Um, but it does include a full allocation for the ward accounts and the recreation accounts. If you look at the, the pie chart there, uh, you can see that uh, the existing citywide debt of $14.9 million is the largest piece there. Uh, in, that's the debt service on the Justice Center uh, of $3.5 million, Carnahan at $2.2, Juvenile at $1.5. We also have payments for the Central Garage, a rolling stock lease, which is our, our fleet program, uh, a QECB loan, and the 1520 market debt of $1.1 million. Uh, we do include uh, this year, the only change in the debt side would be, uh, other than the decline in the um, Justice Center debt, we have $826,000 for a $5.3 million lease purchase to replace some vehicles. I can tell you that it's insufficient to address so many of the vehicle needs we've got, but that's what we had, and so that's what we're working with. In the other, other citywide capital category, uh, we have about one uh, that 2.1 million dollars. That 1.1 million dollars is for court buildings, particularly the juvenile roof repairs and some elevator and uh, 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 HVAC repairs at the civil courts building. And then we also have some small allocations for ITSA, <coughs> as well as BPS building repairs. And then the, this will also be the 550 thousand dollars for the third year of the ash tree uh, removal program, which is uh, a five-year program uh, to deal with that issue. That's all under the capital. Yes. Um, in the ward improvement category, that $9.2 million, last year, as you recall, you usually got, you, you got 75%. Well, this is a full allocation, so this is an increase of $2.8 million over the last fiscal year. Mm -hmm. And the major and neighborhood parks, the $7.7 .7 million. Of that amount, $3.8 million is for debt service for existing uh, obligations, both on the citywide parks as well as the forest park uh, debt uh, that exists, uh, currently exists. Um, and recreation center improvements, uh, which last year did not receive a capital allocation, they got some CDBG funding uh, as a replacement. This year they got it fully allocated at $600,000. I should point out that of the total capital budget, one of the constraints that we have is that of that 
20.7 or 55% is for existing debt or uh, debt, debt obligations. So that sort of limits your ability for other uh, discretionary uh, improvements that we need. So we're addressing all we need uh, in terms of obligations here, but we, uh, our capital needs are far outstrip the ability to uh, what we have uh, to apply to them. Again, on slide 13, personnel totals. Total uh, by fund, general fund was down about 23 positions. General government was down about five. Judicial uh, departments were down nine. The county was two. Obviously, the big changes are in public safety. We picked up the safer grant on fire. This, it'll be up 15. And of course, the NSO positions were 12, down 12. Special fund categories is a 24, uh, went up to a total 476, which is an increase of 24. Of course, the Prop P funding, uh, the rec, rec center, the, the uh, recreation division uh, positions is up 11, uh, and human services is up two, uh, building division is up three, and benefits uh, is up one. Grant funds, it's, a, uh, it's down 36, but most of those related to Slate. Slate was budgeting uh, some of the positions that were part time in the TO, which you don't do. Usually it's the dollar amount. And if you remember, if you're familiar with the, our personnel schedules, we said, no, if they're per performance, you put them in per performance, you don't put them on the TO. So that was more of a correction than actual reduction. And if you look at Slate's budget, you'll see an increase in per performance. And so that's where most of that change occurred. And enterprise funds, uh, they were up four, and that's with the water division. So overall, you're down 32 positions. And you can see by the chart there, public safety remains the largest with 30, over 3,300 positions. Slide 14 is a slide I include every year just to show you the trend over the last 10 years. Uh, you can see the general fund remains down over 400 positions, uh, FY19 going back to FY09. Uh, and the overall fund, we're down over 700 positions uh, going back to FY09. Slide 15, uh, talking, uh, highlights some the pension, the trend in pension costs. Uh, now these costs are for uh, all costs except for the Prop P, which we do anticipate to be uh, arising from the, when you have pay raises, that will increase your pension costs, but we haven't received those yet. But in total, our, our pension costs uh, are total $82.3 million. That's a decline of about two and a half million. Um, and if you see this, details on the next page. I can talk a little bit about those. Uh, we're actually continuing to see some benefits from the pension reform we did with the fire department. Uh, uh, this past year, one of the things I was expecting is an increase because we did an experience study for the fire department, which uh, usually when you do that, they'll do things like changing the assumed rate of return and being more conservative with that, and we were expecting that. But we, we also saw is that there has been a reduction in the number of disability retirements. So that helps, and, that, and, and I think that's related to the reform effort we did earlier, and that sort of helps uh, bring down the cost of this maintaining the system. So we actually saw a decline of about $1.5 million in fire retirement costs. But if you look across the board, you can see employee retirement uh, about, costs about $28.4 million, fire retirement 17.2 and police retirement 36.6 million. Uh, the funding levels uh, on an actuarial and market basis are hovering around 80%. You can see the fire retirement plan, the new plan is up around 60%, which isn't, which isn't odd for a uh, plan that's only four years old, so that, but it was sh it's showing progress. Uh, the bigger issue I think here is the, just the cost of maintaining it. They continue to remain high. Obviously we're in the 10th year of an economic expansion, so in last time we were at this point, most of the plans were over 100% funded. So, while they say, oh, well, it's 80 percent, it's okay, well, you're also running towards the end of the cycle, too. And so it, it's something that um, you got to keep an eye on. Now, there was, uh, just so you know, there was a, you know, we've reformed fire with uh, ERS, that's mostly generated, uh, that's mostly governed by city ordinance, but police strictly as a function of state statute. So. Um, uh, there was a proposal earlier this uh, in the legislative session that the police retirement board actually pr uh, uh, promoted and uh, <coughs> sought changes to that system. Um, I don't believe that's going to be getting it through the legislature this year, although it was a worthwhile effort and it, it basically changed, uh, uh, it was proposing to almost hold that current actives harmless, uh, but changed a lot for the new employees. Uh, I, I, but I, I don't think that's going to get through this, this legislative session. 
this is something that needs to be addressed. Uh, is, uh, the, the cost of maintaining the pension system as, as they currently are is just continues to be uh, a burden on, on the overall balance, budget balancing effort, and it's going to be something that we're going to have to continue to uh, address in the future if we're going to uh, maintain our balanced budget posture each year. Um, moving to the next page, 17, uh, this is a, a slide just discussing the importance of maintaining our fund reserves. Um, if you recall, uh, our overall goal was to maintain a, a cash basis un uh, total for un or unreserved general fund balance of 5% of the budget. That, now, that uh, should be expressed as a minimum target. Uh, obviously, 10% would probably be more closer to the norm. But the, the fact is, is that we're still not there. Uh, we haven't re we, uh, going back to FY09 on a cash basis, we were about $24.5 million, slightly above where we needed to be. But in the, you can look at those two years in the chart, uh, the recession, FY10 and FY11, that was about a $17.6 million drop. That sort of highlights the importance of having a sufficient fund balance. So you can see we slowly recovered on a cash basis since then, but still below where we need to be. So, and uh, this is something that the rating agencies always bring up, and, least, and they also use CAFR numbers in, 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 to, in, to evaluate what our position is. But in any event, the bottom line is basically we need to improve our reserve levels. Uh, this budget for the first year does uh, take a stride in that direction by allocating uh, an amount equal to one and a half percent of the salary accounts for each department, and you'll see that in there. Similar to, similar to what, how we do the 27th pay. Uh, if you remember the 27th pay reserve, it's in everyone's budget. It's sort of out of sight, out of mind. It, it was there two years ago when we needed the 27th pay because that's because we set aside money for it. Well, this will be this, a similar approach, and it's about 1.5 percent of pay, and which is about 3.4 million dollars in the general fund. So, recap: a budget of uh, 1 billion, 111.6 million dollars, a 5 percent increase. It's got the full-year budgets for the economic development half cent sales tax, the half cent public safety sales tax, known as Prop P, and with amounts allocated as specified per ordinance. It's got full allocations of the use tax funds for affordable housing, plus an additional 500,000 and building demolition, as well as the capital funds for ward cap and ca capital and rec centers. The general fund of $516.6 million is a 0.7% increase. It includes funding for new initiatives, but also proposes cuts and reorganization where possible to achieve savings and preserve core services and keep the budget in balance. It also, this budget also establishes the annual mechanism for strengthening the fund balance. And while it does all that, we do have our longer-term challenges. Again, as I mentioned, we are getting at the end, uh, the tenth year of economic expansion, so the next recession, as I, I stated, was uh, one year closer. The strengthening revenue, our, the ability to strengthen our revenue growth base remains a challenge as well. Uh, overall, our general fund revenues grow by about 1.6 percent a year, which is which is uh, tough to do when you're, when you're facing health insurance increase, which go up 8 percent. Our pay is always at least going up one and a half. And our pension costs, which, can, uh, which will continue to rise. Uh, continuing pension reforms, as I mentioned, with the PRS effort particularly, uh, we need to address that going forward. And then, of course, financing of our capital needs. Uh, now, we are taking one small step in that direction, hopefully with the August bond proposal for the bond issue. Uh, but other sources of capital are, are, will be needed. And that sums up uh, the presentation. I'll be happy to entertain any questions. All right. Very good. All right. We'll go down the row. Uh, see if any all the men and all the women have any questions. All the women, Davis. Good morning. Um, I'm just going to make a statement first, and then I'm going to get into my questions that I have here. I've spent a lot of time looking at our revenue uh, generating process and where we are. And it's extremely alarming to me. Um, I'm hoping, and I'm going to say this to the mayor as well, I'm hoping that we can focus more on generating more revenue. Uh, we are in a position now in this city where there are a lot of things that we can uh, promote to generate more money, but not only that, collect the money that we're owed. We're not doing a good job on that. And I looked at that, all of those numbers as well. So we just got to put a lot of things in place. And I can see uh, us in the long run having a better flow
for revenue coming in. But that's a long haul. I'm not dealing with that today. I'm dealing with this budget now. So I want you to explain that debt for the parking garage. Um, you said we had a debt, uh, and when we listed the payments for the debts that we have, you talked about, um, and I didn't have a chance to go back and look at it, um, but you talked about uh, we have Scott Trade and all these other things that we're paying, mm -hmm. Carnahan and all that. You included a garage, a oh, parking garage. I, I, that's probably the, the central industrial, the garage out of central industrial, which is now the, when refuse closed its north site mm -hmm. and consolidated out to central industrial, that's where mm -hmm. the new repair facility is for ESD and... Uh, oh, you're talking about that, okay. Yeah, that's more of a, when I say garage, I'm, I'm talking the repair garage for the city okay. vehicles. Okay, all right. Well, that that's a working garage, that's a yeah. facility garage. That's correct. Okay. So I'm fine with that because I was about to go. Yeah. <laughs> I see <what> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so my other thing is the building division. We cannot afford to cut them. We went through this last year. They're one of the few departments that truly make money for the city. And we need them to have the people to continue to make more money expeditiously so that people will want to continue to develop in the city. We cannot cut them. So we need to give them back at least two of their positions. So we're going to talk, we're going to figure that out like we did last year. We'll figure it out. Uh, also, um, our final uh, numbers for the Neighborhood Stabilization Office, so we have a challenge there. And, and you have brought us some suggestions, or do you want us to figure it out? Well, I, I think the, uh, the, uh, what ENA suggested is that somehow through this process, by the time it gets through, of course, you will have your hearings with departments and, and, and all that. We come up with some resolution to that, to that program. I, I do not have anything today to say. Hey, here's here's eight hundred thousand dollars. Oh no, that's but okay. uh, but I but I, I I think usually as these processes go, there's you know, some give and take and, 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 and some perhaps there's some identification of some reduction somewhere and, and all that, and so we can piece something together which will make everyone. Maybe not everyone's happy, but at least they're less displeased <laughs> with what the end result is. Okay, well, we'll figure that one out too. So, one of the things that you did talk about, and you uh, emphasized it twice in your presentation, is uh, these pension funds, most especially the police pension fund. Uh, it's down more than we would like for it to be. I think they're, uh, they're currently at 78%. Oh, when you're talking about what I'm saying, when I said the, the cost went down this year. Oh, I know the cost went down, but what I'm talking about is when a pension fund operates at lower values, that means we have to pay more into the system to keep it whole. And that's what I'm looking at. Yeah, what we've seen and what we saw this year is because the market was up a bit, you saw mm -hmm. a slight reduction in our contributions. For instance, on the police side, it went down $700,000. Mm -hmm. But to keep in mind, uh, we are at the tenth year of the economic expansion, and so we're still. You're just. But the other funds are not suffering like that. Yeah, well, yeah, the police the police are uh, funded at about just under eighty percent mm -hmm. on on an actuarial basis. Mm -hmm. uh, ERS is just over that on an actuarial basis. The frozen fire plan is almost one hundred percent. Now the fire retirement plan, the new one, is sixty percent, but that's only four years old, so that's wow. not that's not unusual. So yeah, I, I think what sort of Another indicator of, of how much it costs is if you look at the, the, the total cost per participant, it, it's about $29,000 on the on police retirement. So that's almost half the, the, the their annual salary we're spending on pensions. We and, know. And, and so, uh, so when everyone says, oh, we don't have enough for compensation or, or salaries, mm -hmm. well, the salary, the compensation money is being spent on pension costs, mm -hmm. as well as, I mean, you, you also mm -hmm. have other non-salary forms right. of compensation, but pensions is being the, the largest. And it's something that has to be addressed. And as I mentioned, there was a proposal to do that in Jeff City this year. Uh, it didn't, I, I don't believe it's going to be uh, getting through the legislature, but it, it is something that we just can't, we need to address somehow. And, and I, uh, I, it's just something that it, it crowds out other funding. Who sits on that pension board from this office over here? Um, Actually, it, I, I don't have the membership in front of me, but it's... it's but do we have a representative from the Board of Aldermen? Not from the Board. It's we need established, one. well, it's established by state statute. I know, but yeah. we need to work on so. that. I know when I first got here, they were having these knock-down, drag-out, cussing fights 
about the police pension fund. Uh, and and there, it, there was some good cause to it. And because they knew my experience with pension funds, they dragged me into it and I had just got here. Well, none of them were right. Uh, it was something down the middle that needed to be done. And so uh, if we continue to ignore this, uh, even when we come out of this 10 year, you got to look at that fund because when people are not making money for you, you need to fire them. That's the first thing. And then the second thing is you need to diversify your investments so that even when we are in crisis, you're still making money. And so a lot of other funds experienced uh, well in the downturn. And their funds were not hurt. Their pension payments were not hurt. Actually, they did better. Uh, and so if we need to have a seat there, and I want to see that happen because I'm really concerned about that. That's one of those things that could take you all the way to the bottom. Well, I, I, I think it's unfortunate, but that's the only, it's, it's the only plan in which we have no say over. Oh, I mean, it's, I know. it's all state statute. Right. So that's... Right, and, and it's time to get all that changed, too. So, um, but again, the, those are dollars that could really add up later on when we're talking about uh, budget deficits. And we've got to look to the future. We can't keep standing still. We're still having the same conversations we were having four or five years ago. And you got to we got to have the heart to pull the trigger. Uh, I have it. Anybody else want to join me? I'll give you a shot if I can. Let's do it. But um, we've got um, my last thing, and I'll move on, to, so others may speak. Is um, I'm concerned about our payments for these civil service suits um, <laughs> because we should have good insurance to cover that. Number one, and we have to create a way to encourage people where this doesn't happen as often. This is a huge expense to the city. And most especially with the new culture in our society, people are, are interested in filing suits and creating ways for suits to come about. So we got to get smarter on this. And, um, I'm not sure who all needs to be at the table, but I know we need to get on that right away. Um, you could really end up going bankrupt on some of these. You get the right suit against you where somebody get, is awarded $50 million or $100 million, you're done. So we really need to look at this. This is real serious. And um, again, I, I'm going to say this to the mayor as well because those things are just critical. We can find our way in this budget with other things. 10, 20,000 here and there. But those, these things are critical, high end numbers that can hurt us. I'm done. Any questions, old woman? And uh, you've been summoned to her. I need to make a I need to room. Okay. <laughs> All right. All the men in Bacara. Did you say they took out the money for the promotion test and fire employees? The entry level testing still is there. You'll see that there. But the promotional testing is not. Is that, okay, because I know they felt that they wanted to stay in. Right. I, well, I, I, well, that was mixed, but. Yeah, I mean, that, my understanding is they do have existing lists that they can work off of. Those are getting a little old, but they can still use them. Okay, so, so that would be put back for what, next year or something? Like that it could be, yeah. The, the other thing, some of I mean, some of the things. Uh, you know, like, and I, I hate to go back through here, but the business assistance center and and the uh, special events and stuff like that. I know way back in the day, uh, me and Matt Villa actually tried to cut them out because we felt like they they certainly could be absorbed into something else a lot easier. Do you have an opinion on either of those? Well, the business assistance center is not part of this budget. It's it's through SLDC. Okay. Uh, special events is a, yeah, that's just a small office. I, I, I it's as part of this budget, but I, I, I well, it's like three hundred thousand or so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. What page is that? That's in uh, uh, special events. Yes, it's Department 614, and it's under 297,000. Oh, yeah, and then just things that were going through my head. And then and the promotion test was what, like 300,000? Um, I believe police and fire combined was more like 600,000. Okay. 
I didn't really have any real questions. Okay, Alden. All right, thank you. Alder Woman Howard. Um, two questions. Uh, we mentioned the police retirement, and I, I assume, and I don't know if I this is wrong, just to be clear, but that could only be changed through state statute, the retirement, because when we took over and took local control, we left all that in place and with the state. Yeah, part of the it, negotiation that it, it was sort of an unfortunate uh, turn of events is that you, you you got control of the department itself, and one of the big cost drivers itself is the which is pensions, which was carved out and not included in that. Okay, so the only way to do that is through state legislation. That's currently how it works. Okay. Or a ballot initiative. Something to do with the state. Oh, you're the state. Excuse me, I thought I had the floor. Oh, you do. I'm okay. just following up on what you're asking. Okay. I'm curious. All right. Um, or should we wait till it comes okay. all the back around? So, it, as far as you know, legally, and I guess maybe I'll defer to you that it needs to be. Well, I, to as I mentioned law. before, when, when they're trying to, uh, they did have a reform package prepared. And PRS board was uh, promoting yeah, it, and it was at Jeff City. Yeah. It, so, yeah, and he, it would require a change in state statute. All right. The other question I have here is, and when we look at um, uh, page 12, the proposed operating budget, when we look at ward improvements, that includes ward capital, 9.2? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, we're fully funding that. Does that take into consideration any residual funds? It would take into consideration any, uh, let me... I, I think in this year, since sales tax were coming in close to estimate, uh, it, it didn't. It, it just sort of assumed that it meets estimate. And so these are your allocations for going next forward. Year. But that, I mean, it's a good question in that each year. So, for instance, if sales tax falls short in any given year, mm -hmm. well, we don't come back and take money from you. What we do is the next year we take that. Oh, well, they have a big deficit, and we'll make up for that, and we reduce your your allocation. That's just sort of to ease in case you've got projects going and they're not interrupted. Similarly, if there's a surplus, let's say it comes in higher, we will estimate what's next year's estimate, plus we'll bring in that surplus and then as, and, and break that out according to the work. This year was a little unusual in that it was, it was really close to estimate, so I didn't see either a surplus or deficit, and so it's just the uh, sales tax exam. Okay. So, but I mean, if, if people have money left over, at the end of each year, what happens with that? It that, stays in. Yeah, the, on, the, on the capital fund, it stays appropriated within your account. Okay. It's one of the uh, one of the few uh, departments that just doesn't revert. I mean, it just <coughs> it will stay within appropriation. So, if for several years I don't use that money, it just stays there. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All the woman Murphy. Uh, most questions were answered. I said one thing about our, our bond rating, does that, um, uh, a lot of that depends on the fact that we have to vote every five years on the earnings tax. Does, does that, how much does that affect the fact, I know we have the Scott trade thing, I understand right. all that. Right. But isn't a large portion of it the fact that we have that insecure, you know. There are a lot of factors that they take into account okay. when they look at their bond issue. The, the, having to vote on our single largest source of mm -hmm. revenue is one of them. Right. I mean, so they always note that. Hey, they have sure. to re-up that. Uh, I think our lack of reserves uh, are, are, okay. is a big issue, too. And our debt load, so anytime, we, for instance, anytime we go out on a debt type of issue, they will look at that and say, hey, you know, mm -hmm. you've got these concerns over here. You have all these capital needs and things. Where does this new debt fit into addressing any of those? And how much is that debt compared to our demographics as a city? And so they take a lot of things into account when they when they look at that. But uh, and it, uh, what you'd like to be able to do is tr sort of change the direction on some of those. And the, the fund balance initiative is one of them. Uh, obviously, you want to be pretty strident on, on ensuring that when you finance a project, you, you, it is an essential project and it, it's, it is financed. Uh, uh, with uh, conservative estimates and such like that, so you want to you want to do that. Uh, yeah, I don't know what you do with the earnings tax issue. That, that's going to be around for a while, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, that's noted every year. Every every year they. Yeah. I, I thought so too. You know, like the pension thing. As they say, we do, at this point we have no control over the police pension as such. 
uh, all the other pensions, any changes would have to come from from the board of aldermen. I mean, like, to, like if, I mean, obviously we have to shore them up, and perhaps it's going to come to the point where every all of us have to pay in to the pension. Oh, you know, that's a potential. Uh, 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 you know, and but that would come from us. That yeah, would come uh, to the, the board. The employee retirement system is governed by your city ordinance. Okay. So any any proposals there, would, you would see it in ordinance form, as well as the fire retirement plan, the new plan which we is, established. That city. would be through city ordinance okay. as well. Okay. Thank you. That's all right. Okay. Alderman Muhammad. Yes. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I am looking at 238. Uh, department 622 neighborhood stabilization. And I notice here in your plan you have it out of public safety 1.1 million. Mm -hmm. And I see that it still has neighborhood improvement specialists dropping down to 12. Yes. I thought that. That money was being stated in the ENA meeting. What happened? No, what, 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 what they what they state because there was sort of a time crunch. What they said is, by the end of the budget process, we need to find a, a way to fund them so they can be put back in, or some resolution to that issue. Usually, typically, what happens is um, the board of ENA will make a recommendation. It comes to the, the Ways and Means Committee. Ways and Means will have maybe some reductions and maybe some requests for additions. But if you want to add back, it goes back to ENA. The thinking being that if you're going to be asking for the reinstatement of the NSO positions, that's going to be something that can come back to ENA, and that can be it will be resolved at one point or another uh, when that's done. But at the time, the source of the, re uh, the the funding for them was not identified yet. So it's anticipated that but before we're finished with this process, sometime in June, that some resolution to that issue will be. I have a question. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, all women, do you have any questions? Um, good morning, Mr. Payne. How are you? Um, I just want to follow up what the older woman uh, from the 19th talked about uh, with the settlements. We actually at public employees have had the uh, personnel director and the city council was mm -hmm. here yesterday. And you're our third person on our list. So oh, okay. I just wanted to let you know we want to have a nice conversation with you about uh, pension reform mm -hmm. and also about the settlements. Sorry, I thought I'd turn this thing off. Um, about the settlements. And just to follow up a little bit on what uh, Alderwoman from the uh, 14th said about our accounting of our ward capital money, mm -hmm. is there some place in there? Because before I left, when I used to be the Alderwoman of the 20th Ward, one of the last questions I asked sitting right here was about our interest that we get on our account. That then the Comptroller's Office told us that we get interest on our account. And in fact, Alderman Bosley, who was the chair of streets then, then I uh, did an actual um, board bill about mm -hmm. that, turned to an ordinance. And I was just wondering, is that reported to all these older people about their interests? I, I, that would have to come from the controller's office. Okay. But just so you know, when we, we look mm -hmm. at the, the allocations, we use whatever the, the balance is in that fund. So if interest is in there, it'll... it'll does it show yeah, up sure. as interest or is it just I, you don't I know? I don't know. I'd have to defer to the controller's office. But you do know that we get the interest? I. I I don't recall. Okay. I, I don't you know, see that much detail, but I. So. We get the interest, everybody. So look, look for it. Okay, I have no further questions. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Payne. We appreciate it. We'll be seeing you very soon again. And uh, got a lot of questions down the road. All right. We do have the uh, mayor of the city of St. Louis here, and she's going to go over her budget. And, uh, you're welcome to come up and have a seat, Madam Mayor. I guess that Morning, everybody. Were they easy on you or not? Treats. Treats. Sure, that'd be great. That'd be good. Although it might be on your 
Good morning, Madam Mayor. Good morning, Chairman Williamson. Thank you for coming. Sure, sure. Absolutely. So, uh, I guess we'll go ahead and get started um, on your budget. So, the okay. floor is yours. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, I, I wanted if I could just take a minute to say sure. that um, we are uh, really happy to be able to accomplish some things in this budget, and I, I'm speaking really in the budget overall now versus the mayor's department that that haven't been uh, a, that we haven't been able to do before, and um, one of them, and I think you all know this, is that we have uh, fully funded the affordable housing trust fund. I think, as you know, uh, it up to five and a half million dollars versus the five million dollars originally uh, that was anticipated for that and that that fund hasn't been fully funded in about ten years uh, so we're glad that we were able to do that we're also um, happy to be able to say that there is uh, three point seven million dollars in this budget for demolition and board up most of which is for demolition that is again is uh, almost double the amount that we had last year and we think we're going to be able to take down uh, 300, 350 uh, derelict buildings uh, the, as a result of having this demolition money. Now of course we don't want to take down any good brick building that can be redeveloped but we know when we drive around the city that there are many buildings that uh, are too far gone to be redeveloped and so Nothing good happens in a vacant building, and um, so we we are uh, happy to be able to have that additional demolition money in this year's budget. We're hoping that uh, we're hoping that it'll stay there through this budget process, and that we can do it in years to come, so that we can remove some of the, the derelict buildings that that we have in the city. Um, you also know, I think, that because of uh, because the voters voted for Prop P, that July 1st, police and firefighters will get a $10,000 increase in salary and benefits. Um, and this was as a result of Prop P. But in addition to that, so that's on the law enforcement side of things, but in addition to that, there'll be about a million dollars spent on additional uh, recreation programs on summer and after school jobs. That includes, by the way, some money for the, poli the new police cadet program. Uh, and for STL youth jobs, summer jobs for, for young people, uh, more money for homeless services and, and uh, uh, social and mental health services, and for the first time ever, uh, $200,000 in this budget for uh, a mediation program, which uh, to actually fund that program through a mediation groups so that, you know, often, uh, things can be resolved through mediation between parties, whether it's neighbors or employees or whatever it might be, in a way that so that the situation doesn't escalate. And that is something that the Board of Aldermen, a bill that the Board of Aldermen passed last year <coughs> and wanted funded, and so we funded that to the tune of, proposing to fund that to the tune of uh, $200,000. So there's never enough money. You all know that. You've been on this committee for for years, there's never enough money to do everything that, that we want to do, but but we are happy to be able to, you know, do some of those things that we think will will result in a better city and a better uh, environment for our citizens and all the people that that you and I all represent. So, um, so that's kind of the big picture. Thanks for indulging me on that. Um, with regard to the mayor's office budget, uh, we like other departments. Uh, reduced our staff a little bit. Our budget is down about $130,000, $120,000 from uh, last year's budget. And um, that's just, you know, we're just trying to do, to do more with less as well in, in the mayor's office. Um, rather that last year we had in the budget um, uh, 28, that's our current authorization, it's down to 24. Um, some some streamlining of those efforts, and I'm going to let Todd cover any any details or if there's anything that you guys want to any questions that you all have. So how, how many have you reduced it to? Twenty four is uh, what's in this current budget. Job positions to twenty four. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. 
Mike Aberdeen and Ed. Pardon me? No, it, it's fairly simple, as the mayor said. Okay. It's all pretty right. straightforward from last year. Okay. You know, our budget, yeah. like everybody's budget almost, it's just, it's all salaries. We, That's we right. have, you know, we have a little bit of money for, um, you know, uh, <coughs> supplies and that sort of thing, but it, it's all salaries. Okay. I thought Mr. Oh, Wilderman wanted to add something, but we'll just go ahead and go through the list and uh, go to the committee members. I don't know Carl. How many employees do you have? 24. 24. And then, and, and you know, 24 is 2 million, 2 million 51,000 and whatever dollars? Uh, well, the 2 million 51,000 includes supplies and everything. So if you look up, uh, I, I don't know the page, I'm on, I'm on page three there. If you yeah, look up to, you know, the salaries is uh, $1.3 million plus 25000 for per performance, just meaning, you know, anybody we might need, interns or something like that, we might pay a little hourly. And then you've got your Social Security, your health insurance, the retirement plan, all those kinds of things, workers' comp. So uh, coming down to a subtotal for personnel services of $1,864,000. Actual salaries at 1.3 million, 1.332596, and then you know we got a little bit for computers, 15,000, 2,000 for communications, 3,000 for education and train, you know, all those small amounts. I understand. I mean, I was just looking at the total budget for the board of aldermen and just how many employees we have, but. Uh, you have 47. That includes all the all. That, that includes the 28 all. Yeah. So 29, including the president, I guess. So you've the got. Secretary. So. But anyway, it's, yeah. The, the other thing, because when you were talking oh. about it, uh, and I know we've added the building demolition. That's great. But did we cut six? I mean, I'm just going by what I'm being told. So we cut six inspectors. Building inspectors? Yeah. Did we cut six building inspectors? That I'm aware of. Okay. I don't think so. No. Okay. Are we haven't hired or down six, maybe? What? Oh, there. I know. I mean, it's uh, we, we had a hiring freeze because of the current year we're in. Okay. We we slowed down the hiring. Yeah. And I just talked to Frank. We just released. I know we released five in the last week. Okay. That that's that, probably that what you're referencing. Good. And that's right. trying to deal with the current year's budget, not next right. year's. Right. Not next year's. That's right. And just what yeah. you mentioned, it, I was like, well, I thought that. That's good news. Yeah. Then. So, okay. Well, there's really no other questions. And when you brought that up, I'm right. running these directors on the parking lot and tell me, yeah, you know, we need, you know, our, our needs. Um, so, no, that, right. That's all good. I just yeah. that was really yeah. Well, you know, the but the current year that we're in, we uh, we had a projected budget shortfall, so we put a hiring freeze in back a couple, two three months ago, <coughs> just to try to. You know, we can't, we can only spend what we got, right. so. So the freeze is off then? It's off the first of the year. Uh, it's only so six weeks till then, right? So so it's been gradually being released, yeah. Uh, it's only six weeks till the new budget starts, right, Paul? Mm -hmm. So by the time we start the process and hire them and get them in, they won't impact the budget till next year. So we've been loosening it up here in the last week or two. Understanding, though, we didn't freeze real essential people like police officers, the, the limited terms that are mowing the grass. All that went on as normal. But if we had a manager spot open up, we let it sit empty for several months mm -hmm. to try to free up money. Are we still down about 130, please? 124 or something was the number that I saw but they're funded. 10 days ago. They are funded. Uh, yeah. I mean, when you look at the police department budget, yes, those positions are funded, but we use overtime. The, the money that we save in a funded position, of course, we're spending even more than that on overtime because overtime is we one and a half. But times. Yeah, and saying, well, we had put seven million in the budget yep. for overtime. Yep. So we went through the seven million plus. Yep. I think we're on yeah, track so we're to spend 11, 11 million yeah, this year. We're on track to spend 11 or 12. Now that's down from last year. Uh, last year was 16. 16. I'm going on memory here. Paul Paul knows yeah, these numbers. Uh, so, but we are uh, we have spent more in overtime in police overtime than what we had in the budget. Which one the police come in on? And I'm outside your budget, I apologize. That's okay. Well, when the police come in, I'll yeah. also ask. But, right. yeah. no, but when you're down people, and that's, that's one of the reasons, and 
uh, somebody else will talk about this, but you know about the police cadet program that we're trying to start. There's about $900,000 in this budget in a couple of different places to start a police cadet program, which would be for young people 18 to 25, I think it is. Um, ideally, that is a, a three-year program, although you can get in it in the middle somewhere, to where if you think you might want to become a police officer 18 years old, you can't go into the academy mm -hmm. until you're 20 and a half because you can't be a police officer until you're 21. So what happens sometimes in that period between the time that you're 18 uh, and, and then you turn 21, well, you start doing something else. You know, you get into another job or, or whatever. So what we are attempting to do here is to create this police cadet program which will pay the young person uh, for maybe 15 hours of work a week at the police department doing various things, getting exposed to various departments. Uh, we're doing this in, in connection with the police foundation which will provide uniforms and you know the, the things that they need while we'll put them on our payroll as per performance people. They'll make $13 an hour to start. Um, and what we hope is that they'll work 15 hours a week at the police department and maybe go to uh, junior college or community <coughs> college or college or something, you know, and take hours and kind of do both of those things for two or three years until they can get, until they're old enough to get into the academy. And so we're trying to build, um, I'll just call it a pipeline of, mm -hmm. of interested folks, young people when they're 18 years old so that we can actually get them to the point that we get them into the academy. And they'll learn a lot of things too. They'll learn, you know, they're 18, they don't know exactly what they want to do, you know. They'll learn, well, maybe I, maybe I do want to be a police officer, or maybe I don't want to be a police officer. So that's one of the new programs that's in this budget that we think will help over time, not instantly, but it will help uh, get people into the academy and, and reduce the, you know, the number of officers that were short. And um, you all know that, that residency is, is an issue, when, particularly when we go to hire um, anyone who might be experienced, who's already established somewhere, you know, it is, um, it, it, it just is a factor in, in hiring. And I know you're considering a bill right now to uh, put on the ballot whether or not we want to require city employees to live in the city. Of course, I think, frankly, that our city neighborhoods are um, great enough uh, that people want to live in our city because our, our neighborhoods are, you know, they're great places to live. So then the question is, are we going to require them to live in the city? Because we do need to, to, uh, to shorten up this gap on police officers. Because it's a very expensive way to deliver services by using overtime. And mm -hmm. it's hard on officers. I mean, they like a little bit of overtime, you know, everybody likes a little mm -hmm. overtime, but not too much. Sure. And that's why outside. I'm, I'm I know. The, the police. I'm off the subject, <laughs> but you ask the question. So. Thank you. All right. All the women out. I have no <coughs> questions directly related to the mayor's office of county. Nothing. Good. Thank it's you. It's pretty plain. All right. All the women, Murphy. Morning, no, I have no questions. It all looks um, pretty straight to me. Good. All right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mayor. Sure. Uh, contractual and other services. I'm new, so I don't want to know if, what all these things really mean. Mm -hmm. Membership fees. What, what is that exactly? $3,500. I don't know what's in there. Is it... Uh, yeah. I, I don't actually know. I can find out for you what that $3,500 is. Um, it looks like we spent, what did we spend last year, 3134 <coughs> I don't know if it might be, uh, I, I don't know, but I'll get back to you on yeah, that. I'll get that for you. Okay. Uh, internal service, what is that? It's the internal service fund that, Paul, you want to explain that? Internal, internal service is, is, there are actually two of them. One of them is the, the mail room, so if you use mailing and stuff, and you, you have a centralized room, and then you, they charge you for that. There's another one you'll see in other departments where it's fuel. Uh, ESD purchases gasoline, and that, that wouldn't be for this office, obviously, but the service departments you'll see charging for paying the uh, ESD for their fuel purchases. So you'll see two fuel service, our internal service accounts. 
Uh, next is the elected officials' expense accounts and mayor's contingent fund. Mm -hmm. Did you just transfer thirty thousand from one fund to another? You know, I don't know why that's on two different lines. Mm -hmm. That's like the, um, you know, the board of aldermen. You have three hundred fifty dollars a month. Mm -hmm. Is that the right? No, yeah, three hundred fifty dollars a month for expenses. Mm -hmm. This is a similar thing for the mayor. Okay. So and I don't know why it's on two different lines. Paul, did you say yeah, that I, for I some move, reason? I don't know either. Maybe I, they just moved to change the account or something. It's yeah. the same it's the same purpose, but yeah. I, so in FY so seventeen it was in the one account and in FY eighteen they moved it to the other account. Yeah. It's an accounting thing. The comptroller did. So it's just two different yeah, it's the it's same amount of the same new. purpose. Yeah. Uh -huh. yes. Executive Secretary 2, Executive Secretary 1, Secretary uh, to the Mayor. Uh, who are currently in those positions and what do they actually do? Well, you know, that's, it's interesting because you know how personnel has titles for positions that don't necessarily, you know, so that is a category. So Executive Secretary to the Mayor um, is Actually, Nicole Hudson, it doesn't fit, but she's the Deputy Mayor for Racial Equity and Special Initiatives. That's, that's who that is, but that was a uh, position that the um, I don't know, personnel, how does this work, you guys? That, that, that was the position that was in here, and uh, so that's the slot that she went into when she came to work here last year. So, no, no, so I'm, I'm not speaking of the executive, not executive secretary to the mayor. Okay. Executive but secretary let me just say, she's not my secretary. Just for, <laughs> don't, don't misunderstand that. She's, in the, <laughs> she's the deputy mayor for racial equity. So she's in this 21M category. Mm -hmm. So uh, executive assistant to the mayor. So I'm looking at 14G, the 14G category. 14G. Well, you have two, oh, I two, see. two positions in that. Um, that is probably Rodney. Uh, yeah. and Luke. So, like, you notice in here, like, I have a, uh, someone who does scheduling for me. You guys know Luke, Luke Sapa. But there's no title in here that says scheduler, but that is what he does. So he's in that category, and then I believe it's also Rodney uh, Norman. Norman, yes, who, who really works in operations, um, but there's no there's no category on here with the right name for that that position. I think that's the two people, isn't it? Is it someone else? So. We can get you a breakdown of that. Of who's actually? We can get you title. their names next to them, but yeah. And a lot of the a lot of your positions have experienced uh, an increase in salary. Uh huh. A little bit. And there's nothing wrong with that. Just in, in a particular. I reason think one why. and a half. Uh, uh, just. Just the you know one and a half percent or whatever, whatever everybody gets. Isn't that right, Todd? Yeah, there's a couple of performance raises <coughs> here you put out last year. Yeah. For performance, a couple of those, but so, in general, it's the one and a half yeah. that all the city employees get. Who's, who determines performance rates? Is that the direct supervisor? It's the mayor. In cooperation with the people, the staff. No further questions, Mr. Sure. All right, thank you. All right, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, guys. In. Appreciate it. Thank I know you. that um, this is a long road being on the Ways and Means Committee, yes, and Sorry. thank you for doing this. It's a lot of time, and but it's important. Mm -hmm. Important work. Thank you for coming in. Sure. So we're not going to see Darlene. We're not seeing Darlene. Oh, no, I'll get you that. Uh, yeah, you got more of the other words. She's not going to get away from me. You should not. Louis is not coming in. Okay. Louis, we're talking about Okay. So we're just doing Darlene. Now, are we going to get tomorrow again? Hey, please. Okay. Do you want to take a break? Okay. Make sure. Sure. Just announce it. Just announce it. Going for a five minute break. Yeah, we'll resume with the time Thank you. 
I'd like to uh, entertain a motion to put Board Bill 41 in front of us. Second. Alderwoman Davis, Alderman Moore, Alderwoman Davis, Alderman Moore, Alderman Beccaro, present. Alderwoman Howard, aye. Alderwoman Murphy, aye. Alderwoman Boyd, Alderman Muhammad, aye. Chairman Williamson, aye. you have five votes. All right. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Uh, as stated, uh, we have for you today Board Bill, for your consideration, Board Bill 41, which is the uh, city's annual short-term uh, borrowing, which uh, will authorize the issuance of tax and revenue anticipation notes uh, for the coming fiscal year. I have Megan Mockaby uh, with our office uh, with me today, and she'll kind of walk you through some of the highlights of this bill. Okay. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Um, like he says, the issuance of the short-term tax and revenue anticipation notes. Um, it's something we've done every year for the past 35 years. Um, we do it for cash flow purposes to cover any cash flow deficits um, that we have due to uneven, um, the uneven flow of revenues that are coming in and ensure that we can pay our vendors in a timely manner. Um, there's uh, The board bill states a $75 million cap, um, but we do not anticipate needing um, that much. We're planning, expecting to borrow $66 million, um, which is the same as we borrowed last year. Mm, I'm looking at cash flow projections for uh, FY19. Without these funds, our largest deficit comes in October of 2018 with the, um, the deficit of $66 million. So that's really all I have. So if you have any questions? Yes, sir. There's no questions we do it every year. We borrow it and we pay it back. Right, right. right. That hasn't changed. So you're asking us to approve advancing 516.6 million, but you're saying you only need 66? No, this is. Um, Maybe I misunderstood. Yeah, we um, borrow uh, for cash flow purposes for the general fund. $66 million to pay our, because a lot of our revenues don't come in until the second half of the year. Okay. Um, like our large, like tax, um, like our property tax and stuff, most of those, 90% of those come in the second half of the year. So we have a large, you know, in September we have the, of our pension plans we pay for. Which oh, is, okay. You know, and that's like around $40 million and we don't have the money to pay for it at that point. The cash available. I got you. So, okay. So when we do this, we just get it like a line of credit from the bank, and and then it's as soon as the money's in, it gets reimbursed to the oh. bank. Or I mean, it's we're selling. Yeah, we sell bonds. bonds. Yes, oh. and then we pay them off on um, June first. So okay. eleven months. Okay, that's yeah. all I have. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, Auto Woman Murphy. No, no questions. Okay, sounds good. So, okay, you got a problem here. We don't have a problem. No, we do. So, we're well, we got to wait. We have previous roll. No, you have to have five in the room. We do. No, you don't. We have previous role. Yeah, for previous we, role, you need to. Well, no, one of your one of your aldermen, one of your members is not going to speak. No, but he. We had a vote already. We had a vote, and it was five that voted. So if we make a motion in second, we can do previous role. Okay. And if there's no objection that's to previous right. role, that's why. I will defer well, to you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. No, that's what I asked him. But okay. So, go ahead and do it that way. so I'd make a motion that we pass board bill out with a due pass record. Second. Out. And previous rule. Previous rule. Well, Bill 41 has been passed. I will do pass right now. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Thank Chairman. You. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Appreciate it. <coughs> now we'll go through and deal with the budget from the comptroller's office. Yes. Because you know. We do it all the time. If, if we're not supposed to, we do it all the time. I know. I've never seen a meeting that we haven't had. We have the camera. Yeah. 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 Good morning, Madam Good morning. Comptroller. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Well, hello there. Good morning. 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 Good
Good morning, Ways and Means Committee, Honorable Chair and members. Uh, today we want to present our fiscal 19 uh, budget and uh, presenting the details of that budget will be my Deputy Comptroller, Beverly Fitzsimmons. Good morning. Uh, the, de uh, the Comptroller's budget for this year is pretty flat. It, uh, in fact, we're about 20000 lower than last time if you include all the different sections of the Comptroller's office. The sections of the Comptroller's office include uh, the general fund portion, the, uh, the transportation center, um, and uh, as the larger ones, as well as um, the, the redevelopment section of the office. Um, it includes the municipal garage and it includes records retention. Um, so overall, the total budget for all those pieces plus small ones within funds within that, that fund the office is approximately 10.4 million. It is, like I said, pretty flat com comparatively to last year. Um, as far as the TO goes, we do have an addition of two employees, um, which are uh, the one is audit manager. It's something that was approved by ENA this year to handle. And what in the previous budget, that was a professional services uh, expense. And we decided not to go outside. We hired from within. And actually, the gentleman will be starting in the next week or two to actually be our audit manager of our internal audit section. Um, the other one is that we added a, a record a real estate specialist to uh, train in for uh, some retirements that were happening and, and to come in and, and take over our real estate section of the office. So that's it in a nutshell if anybody has questions. Do we ever fix the computer issue that we were paying for, but I know that at some point we needed a better system. Right. Not even going back to that. But <coughs> we do, do we have a better system? We do return? need a better system. Right. Every Our day. efforts uh, didn't work. However, mm -hmm. we did uh, get out of the contract and save the city a million dollars. Going forward, we look forward to a team effort that's led by the mayor's office. Uh, with uh, the IT section and uh, that's what we know so far is that they are working on a, uh, on a regular basis with the committee being formulated. Our office will be included but in terms of the effort it will not be led by our office for the, com the IT uh, office is going to lead off so that not only can the uh, updates occur in the controller's office computer it'll up be updates occurring in other offices as well. Okay, I'm not trying to bring up... Oh, no, that's a good whatever. question. We're, we're just, just glad that we were able to come to a, a, a conclusion with the company that we hired. And I don't know if you know, we uh, shortlisted uh, two companies when we hired. And when we shortlisted those two companies, we hired one. The other company bought out the one we hired. And that's put us in a conundrum. And so they told us that, you know, take it or leave it. And so we had to leave it. And we uh, made an agreement that we did not have to fulfill paying them the, the total contract. And so we brought back, a t uh, out of a $2 million contract, we brought back a $1 million. And so that's what we think. And it, it was about a three or four year effort on our part that we were in and we were going steadily. And then when that other company bought it, the other one says, you got to take us. But we had already rejected them. And so how could we then start over? And they were going to charge us more because what we had agreed to with the other company was unacceptable to them in total. And so we were very fortunate. Uh, to be able to get out of that contract, save the city a million dollars, and move forward. Now here we are post that situation, and now going forward, we will have the leadership of some new folks from the IT section was going to be hired, and then they're going to take the time to evaluate other uh, uh, opportunities for uh, a new computer system. 
Okay, and I really appreciate, you know, your question. And if you guys want to get involved, I think that probably is a, a question that, you know, could be asked when the team gets uh, formed. My understanding is because right now the payroll counts on everybody here and Dream and each department. And, uh, it's an archaic system. Here. It's a 40-year-old system. So obviously yeah. the, it's very archaic. It works. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, right now we're fine with it. And, you know, all of us that have been here for a while are used to it. But yes, we're, we're going forward looking at different possibilities now. I'm on the committee with Cindy Warden is, is leading the committee. And so, um, and we're looking at different options to try to figure out what we want to go out for an RFP on. And it would be very much pulling in the HR system with the, with the uh, uh, accounting system and the payroll system. And, but we are looking at other departments that have computer systems that can be add it with it you know the procurement and the budget division and all the different things that we can take this technology for the city and move forward into the into the future instead of just kind of limping along with what we have like I said what we have works you know it's just that it's not the tech that's out there right and not now. only that what we have we have recently updated the hardware as well as some portions of the software that delivers the system. So in other words, we put more um, into what we already have so that it can continue to work for a while. Uh, so that was really important because we did experience some issues early on in the fiscal year that the mayor's office along with my office got together to make sure that there was ample financing to, to just upgrade what we already have. So we've got, quote unquote, the best of what we, could, you know, have in the system that we have now. Better than the gray tape situation. <laughs> Better than that. The what? Gray tape. Gray tape. You know that gray tape. If you could, it's yeah. a lot better than that. It costs more. It costs more too. <laughs> So how's that credit rate? Dante, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> how's that, cre how's that credit rate, uh, Madam Council? Well, you know, we just got downgraded a couple times. Mm -hmm. uh, Moody's downgraded us uh, for the fourth time, and I think it uh, three years or three and a half years. Mm -hmm. And here's here's the nutshell, so that you guys understand. The nutshell is we're not broke. This city is not broke, but what we have coming in, we put in all of these different buckets. Mm -hmm. If all of that money was put in the general fund, then we would not have the negative look. But what we are telling people the, is that the money is for police or it's for this or that. If we had the discipline to put it in a general fund and spend it the way in which we say we're going to spend, it will make all the difference when you come down to the bottom line because you got all of these different buckets of money. You got the parks fund, you got all these, the, the youth tax fund, and all of these. And according to what I have heard for years from Paul Payne, it will only take the youth tax fund to be bridged together with the general fund that would make a significant difference in how we're evaluated. Is that, did I word that properly? Well, I, I, That's one aspect. As I, as I mentioned when we presented before, right. one of their big concerns is our lack of reserves and mm -hmm. uh, our flexibility within the budget. So and the flexibility that, has to do with what I'm talking about. Yeah, and so when they look at the budget, they're going to look at the general fund. Now, I, as a, the comptroller has, uh, has added, when you, we do point out that, hey, we do, by design, we choose to set aside other funds and, and, and uh, which don't necessarily get picked up from them. And we point that out in our conversations. Um, now, the, I don't know whether the discretionary piece of those other funds are sufficient to where they would like, uh, most people would like to see it. But obviously that would help. But, that would um, help, yeah. But I, but I do think, uh, any way you look at it, we are shy of where we need to be on reserves. Yeah, the reserves is probably a little bit more important than the flexibility, but I point out the flexibility because it does matter. And the other thing uh, that matters is the fact that every five years we have to go out and vote to uh, retain the earnings tax. And that is the, yeah. that's the number one problem with, when uh, we talk about what's hurting our credit rating. That's the number one problem. So if you're talking about uh, the fact that every five years we don't know what the voters are going to say when it comes to our number one revenue. That's a big issue that the rating agencies look at. Okay, how do we have any questions? First of all, good morning to you. Good morning. 
Uh, secondly, uh, as you know, I'm one of your number one fans, so I don't have a lot of questions. The only thing I wanted to do is just ask you if, um, if we had an opportunity for uh, some of our larger uh, corporate entities to come in, counsel, and assist us on uh, operational type things. Do you think that would be helpful? You mean for us As far as that, you were talking about IT and some other things. Uh, I mean, they're here. I think that would be an excellent uh, possibility uh, depending on what they have for us regarding the uh, governmental accounting system that we have. And, and they um, do it for the federal government. They do it even for large other uh, international That'd be excellent. governments as well. Is that, is that pro bono? That is the only conversation I have about anything. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to double check. That would be great. No. Because no. It, 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 you know, it's all about what we can uh, afford. We want mm -hmm. the best, mm -hmm. and a lot of times the best costs the most, mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's over our budget. Mm -hmm. And so what we can do is see how we can schedule our payments over time for what we are bringing in. And we want to make sure that it accommodates all the different <coughs> activities mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, transactions mm -hmm. for payroll and for the personnel mm -hmm. and that we get the kind of security in the system so that we won't uh, uh, have a, a lack of security you know with uh, the numbers because it's very important to have a secure system mm -hmm. and it's good and I uh, apparently it's more difficult with a lot of those hackers it is extremely and I think that you know I'm sure we hire competent people but they don't necessarily know everything that's out here mm -hmm. and you really need the people who are dealing with more complex situations and are staying up to date by the minute because that's what you need now. That's what we need. Someone up to date by the minute. Also, um, the conversation that I had even included because I look at this as a global uh, job that needs to be done. So they even talked about how now you can GPS even your trash cans, your dumpsters, and they will tell you whether or not the truck needs to make a stop or not. And it also <coughs> covers, time-wise, the payroll. So when somebody turns a payroll in and their route wasn't covered and it accumulates a certain amount of time, a payroll should match that. So there's a lot of things going on out here that uh, we probably need to be looking at. Mm -hmm. so. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm glad to hear you say yes. yes. I'm going to say the same thing to the mayor. Very good. Okay. Yes. Okay, that's it. You finished? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you. Howard <coughs> Murphy. Howard. Howard. I mean, Howard. <laughs> That's okay. Um, this, your, your assertion about centralizing and, and I, I'm maybe putting words in your mouth, but you mentioned about having a, a central accounting system where funds would not be parsed out and allocated by department um, kind of goes back to a question I had earlier for um, Paul Paint. Um, the Ward Capital, you know, we keep that and I, I don't mean to harp on that but this kind of applies to most funds that we look at. So, you know, say I have Ward Capital and I don't spend it that year, those funds are, are left there. But they don't show on the books because those were already allocated last year. Is that correct? No, or um, in any capital fund, the money that's appropriated rolls. So the, the cash will not go away, and the appropriation stays there. So if you have $100,000 and you only spend $50,000, 50, 50, is considered a prior year uh, right. roll of appropriation plus the 100 that you may get the next year. So now your budget for the next year is 150. But that money is not... I'm having a hard oh, time. I, I think you're saying in other it's not words, considered it as the it's fiscal not, year budget. Right, it's not it considered is, as part of our budget. In, any, in other words, any money allocated to any department. That is correct. The fiscal Once it's year, allocated, that's it. And absolutely. then when we get to the next fiscal, fiscal year, we start all over, exactly. whether that money's there or not. It, and it's just, I'm going to give you, just like at your house, the money that you have left over, you put it in a jar, and then you get your new budget for the month. That's what you're working on, and that's what Paul does. Mm -hmm. He takes the new revenues for fiscal 19. Anything that's left in your account is in your account and not considered in the new budget unless 
certain situations, and I think we had a, a two million dollar situation with the uh, um, the health health uh, was it health this year? Not health. The uh, affordable housing added their monies to the fiscal budget, so their amount this year includes the amount that they had left over plus the new revenues. So never will your capital monies be a part of the new budget, but it will always be a part of what you have in your total account. Okay, I understand. Okay? That's clear. And it makes so, a difference whether it's a special fund versus a capital fund. So capital right. funds roll their money, roll their, their legal appropriation. A special fund like the affordable housing uh, does have to re-budget re the, the cash balance, like right. Does that uh, money go away if they said. don't use it? No, the cash it doesn't stays go in that back fund. into the general fund. No, so it anytime does not. because those those three there's three pieces of the uh, of the use tax that that by ordinance have to stay there, which is your demo, your, I, your I, affordable yeah, housing, and your health trust fund. Those but are the first three pieces that have to be funded, and then it goes into excess use. I tax. guess you know I'm speaking generally, but we don't we don't right. do anything generally. We have everything <laughs> specified and and right. and earmarked and you know and I, I guess what you're saying is that's why we look like we're broke well that's what that the that's when they when the uh, the uh, credit rating agencies talk about inflexibility inflexible that's what they're talking mm -hmm. about and some smaller cities or even some larger cities they don't have the, the separate uh, accounts like we have. So even if we had the, the use tax set up, mm -hmm. and then if it was part of the general fund and still had it separated, it would make a difference because at the end, we um, still have money. We have we, our balances would look better because mm -hmm. it would be general fund balance as opposed to a use fund balance, mm -hmm. which is over there. So if we went to a new accounting system, would that be a feature we would be looking for? That's a control by ordinance. Those, those so that would be an ordinance we'd have to. Yes, you guys would have. We would work with you guys, that, okay. and 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 that might not be a bad idea, Paul. Paul maybe could head up. Uh, Oh, and you know, got a nod over there. Well, we could we could have each member of the ENA to sit down and talk with our financial advisor, who could talk to the rating agencies and give us, and maybe GFO, and give us their guidelines as to what would help with uh, regard to that inflexibility. Because there, you, you know, know I, I sometimes wonder, you know, Ward Capital, if I don't spend it, it sits there and it just keeps and rolling. And we would love to have whatever and you don't need. I understand that, but I, I think, and, and this goes across the board at all funds. Exactly. If, if people are not using it, it seems as though there should be an expiration date that it needs to be put back into and the general fund. And it could be an ordinance, like you did work on board bill, was it 92 or 94, or whatever it was. My colleagues would probably hang me it? out to dry. I won't. You know, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But anyway, you did a board build supposedly to to do a formula change to a fund. I don't know if it was parking commission or I don't know. Help me out, Todd. Oh, you got it. Is that what it was? And it's some type of balance or something. And so what you're saying, what about an expiration on that? So that's what you're talking about. And I totally agree with you. Mm -hmm. But it takes an ordinance and it takes... You know, all of you guys sitting there and, all these smart and get people the, to put exactly, their heads and figure out what will make a difference. Because I did try that one time with your parks money, if you can recall. Oh, <laughs> I had, um, <laughs> she remembers, yeah. but I had, uh, you know, you guys have a lot of parks, mm -hmm. uh, tons of balances, and we needed body cameras, and I wanted you to loan it to me so then I would pay it back. <laughs> and uh, but that didn't happen. <laughs> But you, uh, you, you understand. So if you got, if you add all the balances, all the parks money, all the capital money, it's millions and millions. You can loan it to the general fund for a moment. We'll use it very well and wisely, and then we'll get you a payment plan to give it back to you. So this would help our credit rating. <laughs> it would help it tremendously. And I'm gonna tell you who it helps the most. It helps the people who pay the taxes, and they'll see more. Uh, 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 work Thank generated, you, you know, right. stuff that, you know, like the parks department uh, and other folks like the cleaning up the empty lots and, you know, uh, hiring interns and all of that. And then you guys, I mean, because I, I, and a great example of it was in uh, the 90s when we were trying to build this wonderful Marriott Hotel downtown. And so we took the, uh, I believe it was the health care of $5 million. We had just set up the health care fund. 
and that developer did not have the five million dollars to break ground and so he broke ground I, I loaned it mm -hmm. and that's when Phyllis Young was still here now, you didn't loan it all by yourself now don't say that because we're on <laughs> I loaned it through the channels through the, that, proper, that channels, the yes. proper channels that the Board of Aldermen allowed it because it had, mm -hmm. that had to be an ordinance and that money did go to that project and it uh, went in early is the reason that it was available. It went into the fund early and it was needed, not needed until the beginning of the fiscal year. And so it was properly repaid after it was used for that purpose. It was properly repaid back to the health care fund. With interest? Uh, it was no interest because it was, a, it was only a matter of about four months. Okay. But see, that's the kind of thing we can do is to recognize the needs that we have to keep the, you know, the business of the city flowing forward. And uh, we've got a lot of empty, uh, I mean, we've got a lot of empty lots with a lot of trash on it. Mm -hmm. And so if there's a need where there's money needed, and it could be capital money, just like they were saying, if you've got balances and you, you know, talk to Todd and say, you know, you know Mr. Uh, Todd, uh, we have... Uh, these extra dollars that we may want to make sure that we've got these empty lots uh, cleaned up and we need you to hire and mm -hmm. you know those are some really wonderful things that we can do for our city to keep our city uh, looking beautiful by and borrowing back and forth back between and accounts forth. I mean yeah. that happens it's a little your, bit more like accounting you, but right. we'll handle it but I, well but if I mean we can handle it now but mm -hmm. what I'm saying is if if we would get a 21st century accounting system, it would be much more transparent. It would absolutely be much more transparent and it would work a lot smoother. Right now, the things I'm saying, it takes a, little, a lot more uh, work to, to accomplish. Right. Absolutely. See, I like to make this stuff easy because I'm not an accountant and I'm just looking at all of this just as it's, it's crazy. It's a lot of struggle when we don't have a really good system. Um, Hopefully, after one, the election, we'll have a good computer system. Okay. One more question. And this is for my colleague from the first award. Um, do we get interest on our ward capital monies? Yes. No, we do. Not anymore. <laughs> we used to. We used, we to. used to. And and what happened was when the interest rates fell to almost nothing, yeah. then you found your fees that you're paying eating up your interest. And so we have not distributed interest. We used to. We did. We used to do take gap balances and actually <coughs> distribute interest. But right now. There, there's no. Uh, we well, put my it. interest back into the general fund. Oh, thank you. So that <laughs> 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 yeah. Take that as a donation. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's all I have. Thank you very much. Oh, wait a minute. One more. I did uh -uh. think of one. More. When is our next time to be up for voting on our our uh, uh, earnings tax? Twenty twenty uh, one, I believe. Yeah. Is it twenty twenty one? Five years. Right. Is it 2021? I it's in so. the spring. And that's yeah. by state statute? It's by state statute? Yeah, yeah unfortunately. And that's a mess. They shouldn't have had any say so. Right. Right. That was ridiculous. We need to work on that too. Yeah, yeah we do. Okay. Yeah, it's scary. Because just imagine if we were to keep that and then mm -hmm. have privatization of the airport at the same mm -hmm. time, we might as well just pack our bags and mm -hmm. turn off the lights. They say turn the lights off. Turn off the lights. Turn off the lights. Shut out the lights. All right. All Murphy. Uh, just uh, the reason it was the reason it's set up the way it is, where the money does not go in the general fund, like you know, you guys are saying it should. Uh, what was the reason for all these specifically? It's because we didn't. Was it because perhaps in the past we didn't Politics. honor what we said the money was going to go to? Some of those people did not honor it. You know, and so then they want this money has to go here. Exactly. I think okay. it's the way that the. I think it also is the way that when when the tax was issued, you know, mm -hmm. in other words, approved. Right. That it was written that, you know, the public safety sales tax has to be used for the the raises of the police officers. Or it has to be used for this crime. But, you know, they're very specific of how you mm -hmm. do it. So the only way to make sure that money is used for that is to keep that in a separate pot. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I mean, obviously, when you one time do a raise to a police officer, that it, he gets another raise, oh, and sure, that doesn't sure. quite cover it anymore. Yeah. You know, it's like a, it's a very thin yeah. fix. You know, yeah. type yeah. idea. Yeah. But the idea of like the the use tax one, you know, like I said, it has the main three buckets of money, but the rest is the excess use tax, and then maybe that's the piece that should roll over into it and stuff. Also, there's a lot of little special revenue funds, and I'm not even talking about maybe the specific tax ones, you know, type idea, that people grab the money for themselves. I'll give you an example. 
the, the Friends of the Recreation Centers. Now, they took all the recreation fees because they want to use them only for the recreation centers. Well, that's not that much money. But the fact is, that was general fund revenue that was used for, to, to fund the rec centers. Now they want it for themselves so they can do extra. That's the kind of stuff I think the comptroller is talking about. Back in the day of the Forest Park, when, when um, McGuire, I think, was the one that put the board bill forth, you know, he took all the revenue that, that Forest Park uh, generated for the city and he said it can only be used for Forest Park. Well, now you've given all that revenue to pay for these bonds for Forest Park, for Forest Park Forever. So where it was funding all this stuff, now the city still has to fund Forest Park in itself. It's not 100% operational by this Forest, you know, Forest Park Forever or anything like that. So you have this pot of money that was taken and now it's going to pay interest on loans did the bond for bonds and all that type of thing like the parks bonds you know you you get issued these park bonds and then there was now you're paying interest so all that money going for interest should have been going for the parks so it, it's a way to look at your pots of money and not segregate those little pieces like you, they have been you know a, a lot of the um uh, <coughs> building permits, you know, it's earmarked only for this, it's earmarked only for that. That's where it hurts. And that's and what makes us up. look bad when they look at us. It adds right, up. Because we have to keep them in And, the, and then mm -hmm. I'm going to just hit the hardest one, or the biggest pot of money, is the um, the tips. Anytime a uh, uh, board bill is being approved for interest rate, well, just to answer what you would ask about the capital, uh, just for the award capital, no interest. Well, it should you should look at tips in the same way when they're tip notes. So that's another issue that we have, and it's going to be talked about. It's going to be brought out that the interest that is allowed by a board bill and it's recommended by SLDC. You know, the developers are receiving interest well above what paid nationally. So, and so that's where we have a big issue, uh, tens of millions of dollars, and it is tens of millions that could go into the general fund, but they go into that particular development project. So uh, what's her name? Lisa is here, mm -hmm. and uh, she's mentioned it earlier today, and she is our tip, tip manager, and she sees every day the amount of money that could be going to the general fund, but because the ordinance and the agreement says that this particular project, TIF, should receive an X percent of interest when the note is done, then we just follow that, 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 that law. Man. Chairman? I don't know if she's finished. Yeah, finished? yeah, no, that's fine. That was I just go ahead attached to this. I just have a question. So we pay interest on those TIFs for the, the developers? Right. Right. We may, we may uh, you know, when you, you, there's like three ordinances that are passed at the time of a TIF, okay? So you have that the district is set up, that you, you have your redevelopment plan, and then you issue a note ordinance, okay? The notes are, are set up that say you think you're giving a $5 million TIF, mm -hmm. well, but then you're also going to allow them to do a note on this. So now you're doing a $5 million plus 6% interest rate. Okay, so that TIF over time, over that 23-year cycle, they're not just getting $5 million, they're getting $5 million plus the interest that that note generates. And it's That's our argument. We would like to see, we would like to see a pay-as-you-go level. Um, there are a couple of them, Lafayette Square, um, How Old Post Office, that do as a pay-as-you-go, that we don't pay this interest. So when you think you're giving a $5 million tip, you're not giving, you're not giving that developer what $5 million, you're giving them more. Well, you figure you're going to be at least, you know, what could that be? Um, you know, two thirds more. You know, over. You know, there's some tiffs that have never even touched the principal because we have to pay this interest out first. So, so you have to pay the interest before you can touch the principal. It's not a set amortization rate. It's how much money goes into the special allocation fund. Okay. This comes so, out of the city budget. Well, it's it's this. It comes it, out it's of the all the all the eats, all the, the economic budget. activity taxes, and all the pilots, the real estate taxes of, of the different entities, go into the special allocation fund. And it's in that special allocation fund goes out uh, twice a year, uh, most of the time. It's twice a year to these developers or to the notes or whoever bought the notes on these developments. We'd like to see that trend in a little bit better, and, and maybe, maybe not a note issue, but possibly. Uh, possibly a pay-as-you-go idea where you're only giving them. You said you need five million. Here's five million. And that's the pay-as-you-go. Is if they say five, and it should be five, right. as opposed to any interest added on to the notes. Yeah. We, we 
we can have, we do need to have a session on that because that. it's not quite that clear. Mm -hmm. Well, um, and, and yeah. it, you know, I'll, I'll pay the sure advocate on this. Yeah. When, when this was brought to SLDC, they said, well, then you would have to analyze and figure out the, the amount of your tip differently Absolutely. because that's part Why of the calculation. So. That that's not what they do. Okay. You know, so I don't know. You know, I, you know what, what it drives the tip number up a little bit. I that's but but it needs to be looked at because right. it's, yeah. it's so the back in the day that's how we did most of them. Well, when you talked about those old we talked about districts, it before. That's how we used to I remember do it. talking about it in two thousand and six. Yeah. And mm -hmm. what we we need to do, I don't know if you could just do a, pass an ordinance that says there shall be no interest on any TIF notes. I mean, an ordinance will fix it. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, and make all, and, and we'll, make it all we'll pay as you go. So this mm -hmm. ways and means committee could be the leadership to, you know, in terms of what you recommend as an ordinance. Mm -hmm. That would that would certainly help the city's bottom line. So whoever yeah. you know, that, that yeah, to get it paid off quicker and see that you know how a tip works is 50 50, 50 for the uh, development and 50 for the city. And what Bev has just said, we can't get our 50, you know, soon enough because we're paying all this interest. So that's where you know the bottom line of the general fund uh, would definitely benefit from an ordinance that you would put in that any there would be no interest on tip notes if you would get that before this uh, uh, this this year ends that would be great and then going forward we would um, be able to um, honor that and then uh, we might even be one by one to look at those that have really hefty interest and work a, a negotiation with the alderman, I'm not the alderman, but the develop, developers to suspend or further, great, payments. further payments. Because if they surpass the amount of the uh, original amount, the principal with the interest, then it just doesn't make sense that we're continuing to pay interest. We should be able to, by ordinance, suspend it. You see what I'm saying? So your ordinance would, would really help us a lot and help us being the city and, and having more money flow to the general fund. It, it definitely needs to be a conversation with SLDC. Right. I, I think definitely what we want to do is to be more practical and there will be no payments to a developer until we paid off the interest first. So whatever is generated. Well, but the interest is to the developer. Most of the time, the, int the developer buys the but, notes himself. But they also have use. The use that comes back when we uh, allow whatever percentage of sales tax or whatever, we need to make sure that nothing goes to the developer until we've satisfied the debts that we need to satisfy first. And there's nothing wrong with that. I see nothing wrong with that, what you're saying. But I want it to be a little bit clear because the first thing that's going to happen if we try to do this is that they're going to come back and say, we are uh, a detriment to development happening. We don't, we don't want to see any projects that's totally move forward. Happen. And I know it's not true, but what I'm saying is there's a way to structure it because there is revenue being generated. But we need to have, we need to have a checklist of what gets paid with the revenue that's generated first. So the priorities need to come, and the priorities need to be to our benefit, like you said. That's, but we need to make it extremely clear and extremely um, uh, beneficial in a way to the city, and then secondary. So I, I'm pro-development, but I also know that there's ways to make this happen. And you know, when I was on the TIF Commission, I raised all kinds of stuff and wouldn't let folks be taken to things were done certain ways. So we can do some things differently, Absolutely. as we did for the school system early on. And so we can make some things happen differently. All right. All the one employed. No questions? All the men for Carla? No, other than if you want to get together, I would like to get together with you and our attorney so that we can draw something up. I'd sponsor legislation. Mm -hmm. Sounds that. wonderful. Finish? Yeah, I just okay. just wanted to comment. All right, yeah, we we'll, we can sit down and talk about it and do it by committee. I think it's fair. Maybe our attorney and our attorney should get together and talk to draft them. something. And now that we have a financial analyst who can we probably can, help yeah. us as well. There you go. Yeah. Exactly. Hey, that's right. That'd be great. That's That'd be awesome. outstanding. So maybe you guys be the working group, and then you all come back to the committee that and educate sense. us. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, well, thank you for coming in. We appreciate it. Okay. Thank you. Ways and means will stand adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.